Okay. Uh, so this is my recording of the showcase of the combination lot. Uh, I've uploaded it to YouTube so that it is easy to share the video file, uh, especially in case if something happens. I don't know. It's just more secure this way. Uh, so I'll be demonstrating the lock working. Uh, I will then show what components in the game I used and how they correlate to the logic gates. Uh, I will then show the lock not working uh, and in between that I will show how some of the locks work with each logic gate to demonstrate my understanding of them because the whole purpose of this was to demonstrate that you can use basic logic gates in Minecraft to create complex circuits and this circuit is a combination lock uh, it's programmable it is not set like it is not strictly set to this combination you can reprogram it to be different uh, so anyone could theoretically uh, replicate this design and just configure it to their liking uh, so yeah uh, this isn't actually a lot this is just an elevator I wouldn't excuse to make an elevator uh, no, I just thought it was cool you can you can send it up if I wanted so bam there we go it's going up and uh, bam it's going down now very cool but it's not yet lock is through here uh, and in terms of design, it turned out exactly how I wanted. I wanted it to sort of look like I'm in a spaceship, uh, and that is what it looks like. So, pretty much, each module here is its own combination lock. Now, instead of just hooking a single combination lock up to a door, what I've done is I've made all these different combination locks, and I've made it so that you have to beat them in the right order uh, for that door to open, and they have to be correct in the right order. So. The correct ordering is, I'm just going to double check, yes, uh, I have it all written down <laughs> so that I don't uh, mess up. Uh, it's this lock, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. They all have to be in that order and they all have to be correct. So I will now demonstrate all of them. So this is a color combination lock, you can press this button and it will cycle the color, color reel. Um, the correct combination is blue, orange, magenta, and red. So you can see that the one at the end here is already red. So this one has to be blue, orange, and magenta. So we can just press these buttons and it will cycle all of these. Um, that is cyan. There we go, that's magenta. Well, no, actually, magenta has to be here, but. There you go, so that's blue, this one will be orange, magenta, red. So let's do that. Well, now what's great about these locks is, bar one, they uh, they transcend language. So you do not have to be able to speak English to be able to solve these. So, blue, orange, magenta, and red. Great. Uh, now we have this one. So this one is a very unique one. It is a rhythm lock. And I'll double check, yes. Pretty much, you have to press these buttons in the correct rhythm and order for it to solve, to give the correct output. So it's one, two, three, four. So let me do that. One, two, three, four. And that's that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, now we do the lever one. Uh, and the lever one, yep, very simple. This is just an AND gate, actually. Uh, I will show you once I show you all the redstone. Uh, this is just an AND gate. So, it is this lever has to be down, this one has to be down, this one has to be up, up, and then down. And only then will it give the output. Uh, so then we go back here to the item frames. Now this one is pretty cool. Um, pretty much how it works is there is something called a comparator which is uh, constantly detecting what position the item in this frame is because you can cycle them around and it will only it's hooked up to a, an AND gate and it will only give the the output if each one is in the correct position so 
this one has to be like that this one has this one's actually already in the right state uh, this one has to be upside down and this one has to be flipped by one and that's that uh, this one works in kind of a similar way actually there is something detecting what page this book is on and each book has to be on the right page uh, I just have these numbered because it's easier but these could be any words you wanted really uh, so this one has to be on page 3 this one has to be on page 11 and then this one has to be on page 5 now if you were really insane um, more insane than I am you would <laughs> you could hook these up so that they have to be in the right order as well so it's this one this one and this one if you wanted it to be oh that one that one and that one it doesn't matter uh, you could theoretically do that I did not do that because that would make this already complex circuit even more compl complicated and I just saw it as unnecessary uh, so this is the final lot of this area anyway um, and it's pretty cool so how this one works is it is an item lock uh, so in each of these there is a specific item and it has to be the specific item otherwise it won't work so what happens when I push this button is this will push the item into the circuit and the circuit will see okay is this the right item if it is for each one it will give the output if it isn't it won't and there are obviously a lot of items in Minecraft there are all these blocks right there's all this decoration this all this stuff can be used uh, except for things that won't stack like swords you can't have two swords in one slot you can only have one um, but all stackable things can be used uh, so I will now demonstrate it so if I push this button and I did everything right up until this point that door will open okay so I actually know where I messed up there that is fine uh, I don't actually mind that because it does actually showcase that the lock has to be done in the correct uh, not only the correct order but it actually has to be done correctly each lock the one that I messed up on is the rhythm lock because I am funnily enough quite rusty with it that it has to be the correct rhythm but I can just do the whole lock again and I will do that so uh, let's make sure that I actually have reset everything properly Okay, I think that's correct. Yep. All right. So now we submit this. All right. Uh, now we submit this again, and I will do it correctly without talking, because um, I think that's just what messed me up. So yeah, that is correct. That is the rhythm. One, two, three, four. I was slightly too slow. Uh, I mainly do it off sound cues normally so the reason I messed up is because I was talking over myself and I was kind of <laughs> funnily enough distracting myself um, then we have the lever look bam 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 uh, the item frames bam 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 the lectins 3 11 not four, five, and then we submit all the items. There we go. See, it does work. <laughs> you just have to do it all right. So I guess me messing up wasn't too bad because it shows that the lock does actually work. Um, just if you were to use this, you wouldn't be as dumb as I was and talk over yourself when you're actually doing it. Uh, so this button actually closes the door behind you um, which is nice but it will also close if you mess up one of the locks so there we go um, now this is the final lock now this lock is uh, pretty much what was back there but instead of each of these inputs being a combination lock it is just a button but there's way more of them this is 18. This is the biggest lock I'd ever built. Um, and funnily enough, it's not the most secure, but it's fine. It's more just a show off way of how far you can stretch this concept. Um, 
So each button has to be pressed in the correct uh, order. And I can kind of just show that by, you know, pressing all these buttons in a random order. Nothing happens because that's not how the lock works. Uh, so the correct order is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and then the door will open. There. So that actually showcases how, you know, that one actually has to be done uh, in the correct order and not just each lock. So I have actually demonstrated the lock failing and succeeding quite well, inadvertently. <laughs> uh, and much like this system here, there is a button that will close the door behind you. Uh, and much like that circuit, if you press one of the inputs, the door will also close, which is great. Uh, and then you would theoretically have this lead to like a big vault or something. Uh, so that's what this is, a placeholder for that door, for a vault door or something. But here we go. This is all the redstone. Now before I um, explain sort of the big brain part of the circuit, uh, I will just go over quickly some of the basic redstone fundamentals. Uh, I also need to explain comparators. Um, so these are pistons. They are used quite a lot. Uh, you definitely heard them with the color one. Pretty much sticky pistons will push and pull blocks, but if they are used quickly, so like on off, they will just push and not pull it back. They will only pull it back on the second quick firing, um, which is used in other sections. Um, but I will show you this is a normal piston, it just pushes, it never pulls back. So I can demonstrate that right now. You see, this is a sticky piston holding a sticky piston. Uh, it pushed it up and then pulled it back. This one, which is a normal piston holding a sticky piston, it just pushed it uh, and didn't pull it back down. So those are pistons. Very, very basic. Uh, button, obviously, and this is redstone line. This is used for a lot of wiring, uh, but it has limited strength. So once you have a line of 15, it will actually run out. Uh, but you can use repeaters, which I'll get into soon. Uh, these are hoppers. So if you put something in this hopper and there is something below it that can hold items uh, it will simply just drop it down so bam there you go uh, it is just how a hopper works in real life it's just a hopper um, this is a redstone torch this is not in real life <laughs> um, but what it is it is it basically reverses the signal so if the signal going into it is off, it gives an on output. If it is on, the signal going into it, it gives an off output. So when I press this button, it will power this torch, giving it an off output, which will unpower this piston for as long as the button is pushed down. So I can demonstrate that now. There we go. That shows it quite well, and these are used for AND gates. So uh, an AND gate is actually this. So. This piston will only fire when both of these levers are down because that will unpower that torch. This will unpower that torch, unpowering this dust. And this dust was powering the torch, which powers this piston, as you can see. Now, the way you would have this in a combination lock is if you had it like this. So this is only going to power the piston when this lever is down. If this lever is down too, it won't work. If only that lever is down, it won't work. And if no levers are down, it won't work. It will only work when this lever is down. So that is actually how the lever combination lock works. You can just tie all these up with a bunch more. You can have it so that uh, yeah, theoretically, well, if you were to do that, then you'd have to uh, have it out like that. So then it'll only work like that. Oops, I broke my own circuit. 
it's fine, let's put that there. Um, yeah, so there is a very, very basic logic gate, um, and that is how you can use it. Uh, funnily enough, the most simple can be the most secure. If you have a big row of, of just this, uh, it is very, very secure, more secure than some of the other stuff used, which is more complicated. Um, now this is a very, very, very watered down version of an RS NOR latch. Now, to keep it really simple, pretty much, um, the input will only have an effect on this torch uh, if this redstone is off. All right, so pressing this again, nothing will happen to this torch. It will not update the torch. Um, it will only change when this one uh, is is freed up. Uh, man, I'm making a dog's practice of this explanation. Pretty much, um, the only you can only press this button if this button has been pressed before it. Same with this. You can only press this button, this button once this button is pressed. Like that. And you can tile this together and make a big, it's it's so bloated a combination log made out of just this circuit. But it can be done, I have done it. Uh, but it is very inefficient. This design is far better. Pretty much, uh, this input has to be first, and then only then this one can be activated. Then this one, then this one. If you then activated, uh, let's see, what would that be? One, two, three, four. So this is five, so it would have to be five. But instead, if you activated six first, the whole thing would reset back to zero, and you'd have to do it all over again. So the only way this is going to give an on output is if this one, this one, this one, etc., etc., all of these are given inputs in the right order, one after the other, consecutively. So you can hook this up to a bunch of buttons and wire them together so that uh, you have to press the buttons in the right order to get the system to work. And this whole system is actually what is used for this section of the lock, only it's flipped and is way smaller because there are only uh, six modules for this lock uh, as opposed to uh, 18 but um yeah so when one of these locks is solved so right now you can see that this one is in the correct state and pretty much what this is doing is it is seeing if so this is a cauldron filled with water uh, and when it's given glass it won't give an output because this will only give an output when it sees a cauldron filled with water um, so because there's glass here, none of these are giving outputs. So this is basically just an AND gate. Uh, so this will mean this is the correct state for it to be in. So when you press that button, it completes the circuit. Um, giving this observer... Oh, I didn't even explain observers. Okay, I will explain observers. Uh, it pretty much turns this into a button input. So then this one is given an input, like a button. Uh, and that's for all of these combination lock circuits. I'm pretty much just converting um, the correct state into a button. And they all have to be done in the right order. So I'll quickly explain to those. They are very, very simple. Pretty much this face here is whatever is directly in front of it, it is constantly t detecting a change. Um, so if I press this button, that is a change. It will give a short output to this piston, so it will fire. But then when the button is unpressed, it will also give a short output and the piston will fire again so like this and these can be placed right next to each other because they are only detecting what is directly in front of them redstone cannot redstone redstone dust if you try putting it next to each other it connects to itself uh, you can use repeaters for this but repeaters have you know, delays so that will eventually ruin timings if something has to be precisely timed but funnily enough you can use that that negative into a positive, which is how the rhythm lock works. It is just repeaters, and you have to press each button in the correct order. Uh, it uses droppers, which will push an item into the hopper, and if it's done in the correct rhythm, so one, if you weren't to mess it up, one, two, three, four, and these are all timed specifically. So once that happens, for a short amount of time, these torches will be off for a second. This is an AND gate meaning that this torch will be on this is a t flip flop 
which I didn't explain. I'm very sorry, I will explain that as well. Um, a flip-flop is actually used in quartz watches, I think. Uh, and they are stacked together 15 times, I believe. Uh, so they are actually a very common circuit. Um, and then that converts that to a button press for this circuit. So I will now explain T flip flops. Pretty much, this is a very watered down version. When you press this button, it will give the on output. When you press it again, it will give the off output. So you ready? On, off. And you know, if you see what I said earlier, that sticky piston uh, pushed its block out and didn't pull it back because it was so fast. But now if I do it again, it will quickly pull that block back, which is powering this redstone. Whoops, sorry, I messed it up. Yeah, like that. Um, and this was simply to showcase uh, the delay of repeaters, so you can actually notch these sticks back. Um, so this is a very short delay, this is a longer delay, longer and even longer. These are all notched differently. So if I press the button, they will all turn on and off at different times. So that is how you can use that. This whole color circuit was used, it primarily uses observers as you can see. Uh, and I will just quickly show you um, the color cycling. Uh, pre pretty much this block is pushed there, then this piston pushes it up, then there will be a block here. This piston will push whatever block is down this way, and this sticky piston will pull the block that is eventually here. So you can see that happening very fast. Like that. It is a very cool circuit. Uh, I saw someone build it at one point and I sort of just had to guess how they did it and I guessed right. All of this is just testing for that basic idea. Um, I guess I'll explain one more important circuit. Oh yeah, I'll show you the levers. Here you can see that if this, this torch, this torch and this torch, so there are levers behind it. If this one's on, that one on and that one on and these two are off, it will give the right output. Uh, I will now explain this one. So this one's pretty cool. Uh, these are the comparators. They detect a whole bunch of different things, um, but in this case I used it, and same with the books, uh, this detects what state the item frame is in. So this one is in its neutral state, so it's only giving one. And if it's, I think this one's a better example because it's in state two. So if this was in state one, the redstone dust would only be here. This one wouldn't be powered. So in turn, this torch would be on, powering this redstone dust. If it was in state 3, the redstone dust would be powering here, which would power this repeater, which would power this redstone dust. So it has to be in each specific state for every line, and then it's connected up to this part here. Um, and if all of this is correct, it will give the correct output, which is then hooked up to that circuit there. And that is used twice because it is also used here, with the lectins. This has to be page 3, this has to be page 11, and this has to be page 5. Uh, very cool. I'm very happy with how all of this turned out. Um, I hope I demonstrated everything correctly. Uh, I know I'm a bit all over the place in some cases, but I hope, yeah, I hope this explains everything uh, decently well. And this showcases that you can use very basic logic gates uh, in very complicated ways, uh, especially in Minecraft. The logic does transfer over. And in this case, this complete circuit is a reliable, um, somewhat user-friendly, if you're the one who actually knows the combination. If not, then you'll just go insane trying to flog it a uh, combination lot. Because this, this I'm not even going to calculate how many combinations this has because it's way below, beyond my skill grade but I know for a fact that it is a number that you cannot it doesn't have a name assigned to it like it'll be one with 50 zeros or something ridiculous like that uh, you could never crack this uh, so yeah that is it I hope I explained everything well um, yeah do let me know if I need do need to clarify anything but uh, I'm pretty sure that's that.